LSU beats ULM 95-60. to And what was, look, I'm not really a close game here, and I appreciate you joining us, Ann Marshall, from the Golden Boot Pod. But game one under Matt McMahon in year three, or what some will label kind of more of a, as a year two type situation, but a really good performance. Look, Ann, I'm just going to cut right to the point. I get that it's ULM, but I thought Carter and Reed had a fantastic night. Reed with 24, Carter with 21 going four from eight from three. How did you how did you see the game tonight? Yeah, I think uh, they kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start, um, especially defensively. They mm-hmm. let ULM kind of make a, l- a little a uh, few outside perimeter shots and get going a little offensively early, but then they kind of settled down around that 10-minute mark, put the clamps on defensively. But offensively, I like what I saw from LSU. I like the offense. Matt McMahon has them running. It's kind of up-tempo type of, Almost like the Mike D'Antoni offense we've seen him run in his his career, where you try to shoot in under 15 seconds, so you're gonna see a lot of penetration trying to get to the rim. If not that, you're gonna see a lot of three point shots from this team. And I think tonight they shot 34 three pointers, so I think that's what you'll see a lot of from this team. Um, but I I agree with you. Carter was was good early, knocked down a few outside shots, and Reed inside was he had a, a huge presence inside tonight on the offensive side and on the defensive side of uh, blocking a few shots. We saw Collins come in off the bench and block a few shots as well. So I think you got a lot of depth on this team as well. We've seen, we saw Givens come in off the bench, chip in with 15 points. We saw uh Victorious Miller come in off the bench, knock down some outside shots. So uh fountain come off the bench was huge on the defensive side and rebounding. So I think that uh you got a, a real deep team. And you got a lot of explosiveness, you got a lot of quickness, and you got a lot of perimeter shot making, which bodes well for a good a good long season. Well, with Tyrell Ward being announced today, Tyrell Ward is yeah. going to be stepping away from mental health reasons. So all you know, Godspeed to him. But and you know, it's interesting. It's funny because you don't ne- now you don't necessarily get the question of what his impact because he was a sharp shooter on the outside. Mm-hmm. But when you and ten or thirty four is not great. Okay, like let's it's twenty nine percent. It's not it's not a great shooting efficiency. But when you talk about Givens coming off the bench and him hitting four threes, I thought the two in the second half. I'm like, I, I got to be a little real with you. I go. You know how when we were when we were kids, we'd shoot uh, to the garbage can and scream mm-hmm. Kobe. And the second yeah. half from some of those, I was screaming Givens. But I think to your point, I want to get back to this. Something that we saw that I don't know if Matt McMahon had in the first two years, 34 shots from threes in, mm-hmm. in any game, regardless opening game, regardless when. And that's a lot of shots from behind the arc. Yeah, it is. But And the thing about it is when you shoot that many threes, you give yourself a chance to beat anybody. If those if those shots fall, you can beat anybody on any night. We've seen that from some of these teams in the NCAA tournament where Oakland, for example, whenever they went on that run in the NCAA yeah. tournament, they just got hot from deep. And when you get hot from deep, you can beat anybody. We've seen uh, Alabama's – Nate Oates team at Alabama, they shoot a lot of three-point shots, and whenever they're falling, they're almost impossible to beat. So – you can live by a three, you could die by a three. If they're not falling, then like tonight, they really weren't falling. It just helped that you were just, you know, basically physically outmanned against ULM. They they couldn't they couldn't stand a chance with you on the court athletically. But whenever you play some of these tougher opponents, you got to shoot better than than 10 of 34. Right. Well, you know, another thing too, and I, you talked about defense. I want to get back to that point really quickly. The Bolden kid for ULM went off. Now I know yeah, he, he went did. eleven he twenty-two. He, 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 I don't know. If, I don't know enough about the kid to come in here and ask you. Maybe you know a little bit more about him than I do. But when I looked at him, those twenty-five points, man. I mean, I'm not again. It's game one. ULM. I get it. But I mean, like if you're you're going to face other shooters in this league, you're going to face other shooters in the season. Did his production worry you? based off of seeing somebody who can score like him have a big night? Um, In a way it did, but at the same time, I don't think it's a big concern. Uh, I think early on in the game, he had two easy looks. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that they you know, contested enough of his looks. But after about, like I said, that 10-minute mark of the first half, I think they locked in a little better, and they made him work for all those points. They, they weren't easy buckets. Yeah. 
he he made some contested shots. He made some difficult shots. So and sometimes you just got to tip your hat to the guy, you know, and just say, hey, you you know, you were better on that play than the defense was. But I mean, he had 25 points on 22 shots. So I mean, he he had to shoot a lot to get those points. So I think whenever you look at it in that sense, they did a good job of forcing him to work hard for his looks and not give him anything easy. So in that sense, I don't really think it's that big of a concern. But at the same time, if they do like they did early in the game and give uncontested, easy looks against good teams, then that could that could really hurt them. You know, and this team, the starting unit went 64% shooting. You had Reed that made eight baskets, Carter that made seven, and Bailey, who I thought, I, I mean, his only miss was the one, from, the one from three. I mean, and here's the thing that I – I don't care who it's against. When you have a starting five that shoots over 60%, okay, mm -hmm. and then your three-point guys, the ones – the percentages get worse because you had Williams that came in, and he's going to get a little – he's not going to go 0 for 5 every night. And then uh, Miller came in. He's 1 for 4 on the night. What I thought about this team early, just from a starting five perspective, whether it be Sears, whether it be Carter, whether it be Bailey, and I, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't want to overreact to one game in ULM, okay? I'm not, <laughs> I, not going to do that. However, I can see where the scoring's coming from now, right? Like, yeah, I, I sure. feel like in the first two years, I'm like, bro, they ain't going to score enough. They're going to have to just lock down defensively, maybe mess some people up in the paint a little bit. But when you see a team, regardless of where it is, when you have a starting five that can shoot that well, I mean, like you said, you can beat anybody, but – Maybe or is the nation a little down on this LSU team that, that maybe where they should be? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that it's kind of a situation of people have seen what LSU was the past few years. And although last year they were an improvement over the first year, they still weren't a tournament team. Mm -hmm. And while they, they added some pieces to this team, through the transfer portal with a Cam Carter, and you know they added some some nice guys at the recruiting out of the recruiting class like Givens. Um, I don't know if they necessarily had the splash names that would have would have brought more attention to the program. So I, what I think they did is they kind of went the. It's almost like the the Brian Kelly approach in the transfer portal, where I'm not going to go get the the big five star name, but I'm going to go get a guy who I know can can play and can contribute. And I think that's what Cam Money Carter ball is. Portal. Yeah. If you look at if you look at what Cam Carter was at Kansas State, he was a, a starter for them and he averaged double digit points. So you went and got a guy who you know can play at a high level and who you know can score the basketball. So when you talk about you don't know where the score was going to come from, some of them other teams in the past. Well, now you you got a guy who you know you can throw the ball and put it in his hands and say, hey, go give me 10 to 15 points, and night in and night out, he can do that. If not, give you 15 to 20 points night in and night out. So on top of that, you got a guy who you could throw the ball to down on the inside, and Reed, who's shown that he could be a force on the inside. And eight of nine, I'll take that any night. Oh, on any no night. And, and add, add eight rebounds to that? I mean, come on, man. That's, and he's, he's probably going to be a double-double like every night that kind of inside presence for you. And so if you got a guy who can give you 10 to 15 on the inside and a guy who can give you 15, 20 on the outside, I mean, you, you're looking at 35, 40 points a night just between those two guys. And that's going to carry the scoring load for you. Then you have guys, like you mentioned, Bailey chipping in his 13, Givens coming off the bench with his 15. You know, obviously and you uh, know Williams – Miller's not going to be off like that. Like he yeah, was. and neither neither is Williams. You know what I mean? Those right. guys are going to chip in a little bit more. Found's going to give you his six to eight, ten points. You know what I mean? Off the bench with, with his hustle plays. So I think that you're going to get enough points offensively. The question is, can can you do like some of the Madman Man teams of the past and lock in defensively to where you can hold teams to around 60, 70 points? If you can do that and don't have to get in track meets every night then it doesn't matter if your shot's falling every night because you can afford to have an off night like a night versus ULM tonight, you know, because you were able to lock in defensively. You know what I felt like tonight as we're getting wrapping this up and getting out of here? You know what I felt like tonight? I felt like, 
You know, and I, I think because LSU is not necessarily always in this type of situation, like a full on mm-hmm. rebuild, right? Like, I mean, when it, I mean, yes, maybe Brian Kelly, LSU football, but that, I, I, I mean, you still had a lot of really good pieces there, right? Like, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not like you didn't have good pieces. Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas were on the team that he inherited. It's not like a complete and total rebuild. Now, <clears throat> I felt like tonight, and correct me if I'm wrong, I felt like I learned more about Matt McMahon's identity than I Mm -hmm. did about the team. Am I wrong in saying that? No, I think you're 100% correct in that. I think that you saw saw what a Matt McMahon's team looks like. You saw what he wants to do offensively. You saw how how he wants to play, you know, eight to ten guys and, and, and do a lot of rotation, keep guys fresh so they can play with high intensity on defense and they can play with quick tempo on offense. I think that's kind of his identity. His M.O. is going to be play with pace, play with intensity on defense, and try to get as many shots up as you can. And so I think you're going to see them push the ball a lot. I think you're going to see them kind of press more uh, out of uh, free throws and timeouts. I think you're going to see a lot more of that kind of defense and defensive intensity than we've seen in the past. I love too, and only 12 turnovers and seven of them came in the first half because you were just being careless. And yeah. so, look, I, I mean, it is only game one. <clears throat> okay, I don't want to overreact to beating ULM. But at the same time, I, I, I the, your eyes tell you of what they're trying to accomplish, right? Like your eyes just told you, <clears throat> excuse me, what they want to do. And so I think that you can win a lot of basketball games doing that, and let's see if they can – Continue on a run here. So, Ant Petty Marshall uh, from the Golden Boot Pod. Tell everybody where they can catch all your stuff, brother. Yeah, man, we're the uh, the Golden Boot Pod. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, wherever you find all your favorite podcasts. There, you can check us out. Um, we talk LSU, we talk Louisiana sports, and all things uh, NCAA football. Right now, we're talking about the playoff picture, the new college football poll that just dropped, and of course, talking LSU. Yeah, you know, uh, big week. You know, our, our view our views go up when uh, when people when we, we you beat a team like Bama. So, um, game one under Mac McMahon in year three goes into the win column. LSU beats ULM ninety five to sixty. We'll see you then next time. Y'all have a good one.